there's three divisions. It's usually, there's slightly different variations on how they divide it, but usually it's around the corner of the eye here. So basically you'd have this as one division here, and then between the eye and the mouth, that'd be the second division, and then the third is down below. So you have ophthalmic, and then maxillary, and then mandibular. The mandibular is going to be a sensory end motor. So that's going to go to the motor muscles of mastication. So trigeminal nerve is going to be sensory end motor, and the motor portion goes to the muscles of mastication. So it would be the masseter, temporalis, and the internal, I mean the medial <coughs> nerve pterygoids. And then again, this kind of relates to, again, what I was saying before about when you talk about cervicogenic headaches, there's a relationship where it's different sources you might look at. They mentioned the greater occipital nerve, the lesser occipital nerve, and the trigeminal nerve. Okay, so trigeminal is going to be sensory to the head and face. So it makes sense that that could be related with, with headaches. So then basically, if, if somebody, if you suspect there might be a trigeminal nerve problem, you know, they might have wasting of the masseter. Okay. So they're going to do the pterygoid muscle, the masseter, temporalis. So basically they're opening and closing their jaw. Okay. And then what you can do is, uh, you can, you can feel their masseter and have them con uh, contract or con clench their teeth like that. And then you don't need to put your fingers in their mouth and pull down, but you can kind of, kind of push down on the jaw and ask them to hold it, you know, kind of pull down like that. Or you can push down on the front of the chin like this. You know, have them say, I'm going to press down, you press up. Like that. And then also you can do the opposite where they're opening their mouth and you press it underneath. And then there is another reflex you can do where you put your, your thumb on your chin and then you're hitting with the hammer like that. And then you're looking for the jaw to close. And then another thing you can do is a corneal reflex and that's where you're touching a wisp of cotton against the, the eye, the surface of the eye, and then you're looking for the, uh, see. so you're holding the eyelid down like that and you have them to look up and then you're touching on the, on the surface of the eye. And then they, both eyes should blink. <coughs> And then with the, you know, can use cotton. And then basically what you're doing is just testing light touch to the different sides of the face. So you're going to do three, three spots on each side of the face. So you have them close your eyes and you know, touch here, here, and there. So you do the three divisions, one above the eye, the one between the eye and the mouth, and then one down below the mouth over on the chin. And then there's another type of headaches called trigeminal neuralgia, where they're going to have pain in one of the divisions of the fifth cranial nerve. Okay. And then that can be pretty intense pain, and it can be triggered by some type of sensory stimulation to one of those divisions of the trigeminal nerve. And it can be such bad headaches that people consider suicide because of the severity of the headaches. And then the facial nerve basically is going to be considered a sensory nerve, even though it's mixed. Okay, so it's going to do, be the muscles of the facial expression. And then the lacrimal glands, which has to do with the tears, is parasympathetic control under the facial nerve. And then the facial nerve, the sensory part of it is going to be taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And we're not really going to be doing anything with that, but you know, technically you can you can do taste things on the anterior two thirds of the tongue. What are the different things that senses that you have for taste? Sweet, sweet, salty, bitter, sour, bitter. Right? 
Then there's another one that they talk about too now that's, I forget the, yeah, what's the, I don't remember the name of it. It's kind of like more of an earthy, like a mushroom kind of umami. But we won't really be getting into that too much. So basically with motor for, for facial nerve, you just ask them to do things with muscles of facial expression. You know, raise your eyebrows, you know, smile, <coughs> wrinkle your forehead, things like that. And so then if they're if patients <coughs> wrinkle their forehead but can't elevate their corner of their mouth, they may have an upper motor neuron lesion where if they can't work the um, Elevate the, if they can't wrinkle the forehead or elevate the forehead <coughs> enough, then it's more likely a lower motor neuron. And then the other things you can do is have them whistle or shut their eyes tight or smile to show your teeth like that. So basically it's going to be mu muscles of facial expression, so you want to do it in different areas. So you want to do something where you wrinkle their forehead to do the upper part, do something with their mouth. So this is something with like Bell's palsy, right? Heard of that, where they'll have like their one side of their face might have a lack of facial expression, their mouth may droop down on one side. So the upper motor neuron lesion would be something like a stroke or a brain problem, right? So because we have with motor nerves, you have the upper motor neuron and the <coughs> lower motor neuron. The lower motor neuron is what's going to go to the actual muscle. Whereas the upper motor neuron is what comes from the cerebral cortex. And so then the upper motor neuron usually is going to present in the lower parts of the face and not so much on the top. <coughs> so that's why the, and I think I put on the secure side too, there's a thing like where they talk about how to tell if somebody has a stroke, it's things that you can do real quickly. You know, ask them to speak, ask them to smile, or ask them to raise their arms. You know, so if they can't do those, those could be signs of a stroke. Because they went through a couple of different things and tried to fit, pick something that's going to be easy for the average lay person to, to just do real quickly. Because as I mentioned before, if you, the, the sooner you can recognize a stroke, there's medications and things that they can use right now where you can basically reverse it or, or make it not have permanent damage. And, so then if you're having a lower motor neuron lesion or a Bell's palsy type of thing, that's going to be lower motor neuron. And then they're having aching around the ear right before it starts. Because the facial nerve kind of comes out around this area and goes to the different muscles of the face. And then they're going to have involvement of the wrinkling the forehead and the mouth. Whereas if it's upper motor neuron, usually they don't have a problem with the wrinkling or raising the eyebrows, but it's more in the lower part of the face. <coughs>